the whole internet is lying to you simply because either they don't know the right way or they don't want to share the secret way how the big organizations are creating their OSS systems only to monetize this free and open source technology and use the framework to create a proper voice assistant. As a result, you have been doing it wrong and I have been doing it wrong as well. Especially I have made the same mistake when I have launched my open source voice enabled AI powers. Maybe like me, you were excited about the launch of OpenAI's real-time API only to feel let down later on by seeing the huge cost of using that API. Plus, only to realize that the API is just making the AI processing faster but not actually solving the core issue of state management, making your AI agent highly available, keeping your context available to in a highly available environment to make your voice enabled AI assistant used in a production environment in a real life conversation. But let me assure you, by the end of this video, you will know the exact right way to create your next voice AI assistant without even writing a thousand line of code. But let me first show you the demo, shall we? Hi there, how can I help? Hi, I do have an home service business and I was wondering to use AI automation service. Can you help me with automating stuff for my business? Absolutely, I can help you with that. AI automation can streamline your operations and improve efficiency in managing your staff. Would you like to set up an appointment to discuss the specifics of your needs? If so, please provide me with your name and email address and I can send you a booking link. Yeah, how much does it cost for the appointment? The appointment for discussing AI automation services is typically free of charge. It's a great opportunity to explore how we can assist your home service business without any initial cost. Would you like to proceed with booking an appointment? If yeah, so, sure. please share your... Let's do that. Great. Please provide me with your name and so email my address. Name is and my email address is notogethergmail.com. I've sent the appointment booking link to your email address. No, no, no altogether. Sorry. My email address is no together, not altogether. Can I type? Of course. Please provide the correct email address, and I'll make sure to send the appointment booking link to that one. It seems there was a misunderstanding. Please confirm your correct email address so I can assist you with booking the appointment properly. Yep, I've sent you that. I've just typed it. I've sent the appointment booking link to your email address, kntogether at gmail.com. Please check your inbox and let me know if you need any further assistance. And there you go. The email. And now I can just click here and I can book a calendar. If you're having trouble receiving the email, please check your spam or junk folder just in case it ended up there. If you still don't see it, I can assist you with the appointment details right here. How would you like to proceed? No, that's all. I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. If you have any more questions or need further assistance in the future, feel free to reach out. Have a great day. So how good that was? Let me know in the comment. Now, what you have seen in the demo is not powered by the real-time API. This is using the GPT-40 mini API. In fact, you could use an open source LLM API as well. Have you seen the latency? So in this video, we are going to talk about an open source framework called WebRTC, using which you can create and deploy completely latency-free AI-powered voice assistants for your personal or business use case without incurring heavy API cost like using the real-time API from OpenAI. But before that, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because in this fast sea of YouTube, we may never meet again otherwise. And as a result, you might miss this kind of detailed analysis and valuable content in the near future. So without wasting any further time, let's dive. So this is a standard client-server architecture, where basically a user goes to a client, maybe a browser or any other client like Twilio clients or something, and then 
the client actually calls the server, gets a response and sends back the response, either the same structure it receives or it or the client basically restructure the uh, response from the server and you know sends it back to the user in a format that user understands right so this is the existing client server architecture looks like now what internet is telling you uh, or we generally apply in our voice agent is the same thing so basically users is calling your ai agent or voice ai agent using twilio like using your mobile number or whatever using browser or whatever or maybe your python program and then the AI agent does so many things, right? It does the input processing, validates of the input. It does track all the conversation history. It needs to do function calling. It needs to retrieve documentation or information from using RAG. Uh, it needs to track the conversation state and so many other things. And what happens as a result, the agent process could get overwhelmed. It would crash. It is difficult to manage multiple conversations. So if the number of user grows, and it becomes very difficult for the agent process or the server to manage multiple concurrent connections and the conversation history grows so that means the memory requirement grows and then there is a difficulty to manage the connection drops let's say the communication is running and the connection drops in the middle what happens and in that case you have to think about that in your ai agent the high availability is almost impossible for example if the voice ai agent is responding back to user and in the meanwhile the server is crashed that means the user interaction or the user experience is impacted because the AI agent is doing so many things there is a higher latency mostly things are asynchronous that means it needs to do input processing only to then do maybe the function calling right and only after the function calling result is, re it is returned then it responds back and the user actually needs to wait for the AI agent to do all this processing and the response to come back before even it can do interaction or maybe let's say user have said something or some input that it has given only to realize that the input is not right as you have seen in my example that the email address i have provided is not right or it didn't understand right so i had to immediately correct it so those kind of things is really difficult to manage in this architecture right and yes it is giving the bad user experience as i have said already now, how can I solve the problem? This is the exact problem that I have faced when they have launched this Naughty AI project. And in fact, if you have seen the project still, this is running on this architecture and this is so bad. I mean, I have had sleepless night to think about correctifying all these different issues that I am facing. Okay. So I have actually started doing some deep dive and a few days back OpenAI have launched the real-time API and then I was so pumped up I thought okay maybe this is the solution but real-time API is not sol solving the problem it's just maybe adding one problem of the cost okay because that means if user is providing invalid input or something I'm going to process it in my AI agent that's only going to increase the cost without you know getting me any value right so I have been doing a bit of research and then I have found this framework called WebRTC or web-based real-time communication. Now, I'm not going to go through the, you know, the technical aspects or use those technical terms so you don't understand it. I'm just going to use this very simple example how we can solve most of this problem using this WebRTC framework. Now, instead of user directly calling the user agent, what if <clears throat> we create some kind of a conference room? Just imagine a scenario where you have called an a an human agent in a company so the human agent is basically saying hello how can i help you then you have asked some questions and then maybe the that agent needs to do some you know processing in the back end say so it'll ask you to wait she will do or he will do the stuff and then you realize okay i have some important other information to provide you give it to her or him and then she does the processing immediately she changes the processing and so it now does something else and then responds you based on your latest input, right? Even better than that, if you have like a conference room, so where you have joined and then there are multiple agent joined, one from each unit, let's say one from IT, you have an IT problem and one from the actual help desk. And then both of them are working for your problem to solve, right? So that is actually going to give you a better output, right? So we could do the same thing. So we could have a conference room, which in WebRTC framework is called signaling server. 
So this conference room is where we will manage the state of the conversation. We'll keep the conversation history and all these other bits. And what we will do essentially, we will, the user will join the conference room. And at the same time, it will create our AI agent to join the same conference room where the user is waiting, basically. Now, once the AI agent joins, then it can read the conversation history or whatever user have said. And based on that, it can do function calling. It can extract information from the internet. It can do rag retrieval and so many other things that you could do with AI agent, right? I'm not going into the detail. The best part is you can actually spin up multiple agent and make, make it join to the same conference room. It can be same type of agent. It can be different type of agent. Uh, you can create actually a high available AI agent infrastructure and make it available to the any conference room. So that means whenever a user wants to, let's say, communicate with your company, um, once it calls, it's basically spawn, spin up a new conference room. And then the new conference room, uh, based on the AI agent availability, the, it will join the conference room and then it will serve the user. And once the communication is ended, the AI agent and user will leave the conference room and the conference room will be deleted, right? So if we do this way, this actually solves most of our problem that we have discussed previously, right? And this is how the entire web RTC framework works. In fact, if you have been using the OpenAI's uh, mobile app, uh, where they have now improved the voice assistant, right? You you are seeing that the voice assistant is much more realistic, right? The, how they are doing it is, is they are using a company or a project called LiveKit. Though it's not a sponsored video or anything from LiveKit, so this LiveKit is an open source tool. It's completely free. You can, in fact, self-host uh, the LiveKit server in your own in your own infrastructure, and you can use it. Okay, so OpenAI is using LiveKit to give you that experience. And this is what we are also exactly going to do here. We will create an AI agent that will do function calling and we can use that uh, AI agent uh, to join a room where the user will be waiting and our user will join and we can do all the communication. If I show you the code, if the best part is what, this is like 162 lines of code. I mean, there are, there are parts of code which are not even being used, I have just, uh, kept it uh, because I was doing some research on that one. So I'm just going to quickly just show you the code and then I'll tell you how it's working and then we can do another round of demo if you wish, okay? What we are doing is we are creating an entry point function and this entry point function is actually being called by our main method. If you see here, it's just calling the entry point function. So in this entry point function, we are uh, creating the context of our AI agent and we are using OpenAI LLM, but we are using GPT-4 mini model, which is much cheaper. And remember, I have also came up with the prompt caching. That means maybe your first one or two AI API call will cost a bit more. But as you continue the conversation or progress to the conversation, the prompt caching will be applied and your cost will be reduced. Okay, so th this is the best part actually. And then we are also using OpenAI TTS for text to speech. We can use 11 labs or any other free provider. And for speech to text, like when I am speaking to the agent, I'm using Deep Grammar. Again, Deep Grand provide you $200 of free credit, which we are using as well. I'll show you in a few minutes what we have done. And then um, this is, we have specified a few function. One is the answer function where it will use the LLM to speak the answer out to the user. And then we have defined a an, an appointment function. Uh, so this appointment function is actually calling the assistant uh, class. So this is where we have created the assistant function here. We have given the description of the function, when this function needs to be called. So it's not being used every time in every communication, which is what I have done wrong in my sales agent project. I have to restructure the entire project. Trust me, still I'm already started working on the redefined architecture for the not AI project. So have a look, maybe fork that project or something and keep an eye on that project as well, if you can, of course. And then I'm just doing the, the book appointment here. And for book appointment call, we need the email address and the phone and the person's name uh, so that we can send email. And then I'm using our CRM solution, uh, which I'm also going to show you. So in the CRM, I have created a few automations. I've created a few opportunity and pipeline, which this is basically calling and it's helping to book the appointment, 
right? So this, so my CRM is actually sending the email, not the agent. So the agent is only connecting to my CRM and the CRM is doing the rest. So, so that's how things are done. The best part in this setup is that it's not necessarily when user is only giving instruction, then only the AI agent needs to work. The AI agent can even do some subtask or task or, you know, automatically based on the interactions and then it can respond back the user. For example, in this code, what I have done is I have created check appointment status, which is an async function or asynchronous function. So that means what will happen is let's say user says, yeah, this is my name and this is my email address. And then the assistant has sent the booking link to the user. Now let's say user have not clicked the booking link and booked the appointment. So the assistant can just say the user, hey, I just saw that you haven't yet booked the appointment. Are you facing any details or you have, or do you want me to send the email again or whatever, right? So, so this is like more realistic conversations that an agent can do, like an AI agent can do. You don't need a human agent and it can track whether the user have actually booked the appointment. If, if not, it can offer help like a normal human would do, right? And in this way, you can make this more realistic as well, right? It's, you can use it in live use cases. And and this is what I have done here. So, uh, so basically asynchronously, I think somewhere here. Yeah, so somewhere here, I have said that if the function call is finished, please make a call to the follow-up appointment function. And in the follow-up appointment, I'm just saying, okay, please wait for 20 seconds. See if you, the user have booked the appointment using the link that you have sent or not. And if you find that the user haven't booked, so check appointment status call. It, again, it's going to actually call my CRM and it's going to get if the user has already successfully booked the appointment or not. If not, then I'm just saying, please offer him help. So this response will be passed to the AI LLM model and the LLM model will generate output based on the user response okay and the other thing is we are using a technology here called VAD or voice activity detector so, so that means a user don't need to wait for users function as you have seen in the demo initially right so uh, so user can just jump in when the assistant is let's say responding it, it can just jump in and say oh no no that's not what I want this is what I want so something like that you can do that right what you can do in and actual human to human communication. You can do that with AI agent as well with this framework. Okay, so this code is available for you for completely free. So check the link in the description below and get the code. But if you want more deep dive and if you want me to cover how you can create a more highly available structure or architecture using this WebRTC and LiveKit, um, I will do a more deep dive for members on the video. So please consider taking the membership and, and I will bring more video on this topic because this is really, really interesting. This is this has actually opened up so many possibilities. My brain is exploding with ideas that I can build. I can actually now even build a proper Jarvis setup, you know, for my own um, AI assistant. I'll probably create another video for that one later on. Okay, so <clears throat> this is how it's working. Basically, I'm just going to now go through step by step what you have to do and yeah. And, and then we can close the video. So basically just clone this repository. Don't worry about all these codes because these codes are not complete yet. I'm trying to actually make it more productionized. So that is why you will see that these codes are being now split based on its functionalities. The, a Docker file and Docker Compose file is introduced so that I can create multiple spawn of this agent. But again, none of this work is completed. I have to make progress through it. So please use the link download the code maybe if you want to contribute contribute it through the community so join the community as well and most parties let me know how you are going to use this code or how you are going to use this framework for your own use cases so one of the first thing that you need to do once you once you clone this uh, repository is you need an env um, create an env look and you specify this token so openai api key you can get it from openai so go to deepgram within this console.deepgram i'm just going to do a quick login there just create an api key just create it here as you can see you get like 200 dollar of credit uh, this is for free that you can use for any std or speech to text call i think it also does a text to speech i'm not sure i haven't tested it but 
but what I am doing is in this case I am using OpenAI itself for the uh, TTS for text to speech and uh, don't worry about this API token uh, um, this is actually used for calling my CRM application um, uh, by the way if you are looking for your CRM application or you want to set up your AI agent uh, automated system that we have built using this agent if you want to grab that again use the link below and I will help you set up all those things okay now you need three more important things which is live git api key secret and url so for that what you can do is you have two option one you can self host live git but in this case i'm not going to do that i'm just going to use the hosted version again the hosted version is free completely free you don't have to pay anything um, uh, there is a payment tier of course but uh, we are not going to use that uh, here uh, i think free tier is sufficient for your development purpose i must say now, once you come into this live kit boot on after you're done with the registration, uh, you don't even need to give your credit card number or anything, okay? So this is just free completely. Once you do that, uh, you just come to these settings and then go to keys and then you just create a key from here, okay? So like here, you just create key and once you click create key, give a name like some test kit. And once you do like generate, this you will get this websocket url api key and secret key and this is what you need to provide it here and once you are done with all those things you can actually just run the code on yeah of course you need to create a python environment i'm not going to go that this is very very simple if you are very new maybe check some of my other videos where i have already created python environment done that just install all these requirements so just using pip install minus r um, requirement.txt and that will install everything for you and then all you have to do is just run the agent by using python webrtc agent uh, .py. so once you run that what happens is this agent starts up and it actually joins um, a room so how you can see is if you come here in sessions you will see like uh, the active sessions now at the moment there is no active session as you can see now if i just start this so this is started this is waiting for a room to join uh, so this is the agent playground that is just a fork of the live kit uh, agent uh, playground all you have to do just clone that repository i will attach the link of that playground as well or just use the link below and i'll send all you all the details over email and then um, all you have to do just do npm install and then do npm run dev and this will actually start your agent playground um, you can use the hosted uh, agent playground as well but um, i haven't done that uh, for security purpose uh, but i will attach the link for the hosted uh, the cloud hosted agent playground provided by live kit you can use that you don't need to run this in your local uh, necessarily okay and then if you go here that will open the client before you click connect sorry sorry to uh, before that just create a .env file and provide the same live kit api key secret and url that are that you have used for the agent and then once you click this connect that will connect to the uh, to the live room uh, and then the agent will also join to the live room so as you can see agent is connected now that's great how can i assist you further with your appointment booking or any other inquiries regarding ai automation services yep so uh, this is how it works uh, please go ahead test it let me know how that goes and if you need any help and most importantly let me know how you are going to use this system okay so just quickly going to show you how i have done the automation setup for sending the email in my crm so this is the crm that i use uh, it's on our own domain and then here i have created this book appointment automations so basically this automation is very simple so here basically i've used a webhook so once this webhook is triggered uh, with post request and with an email address what it is going to do is just create a contact in my crm it's going to add a tag like live kit agent test then it's going to add it into a pipeline and then it's going to generate a booking link and then email the booking link to the user then i have another automation that was built in which is uh, user have booked appointment so once user actually go ahead and book the appointment using the link that was sent that will trigger this automation where it will just check 
uh, if the user have actually booked an appointment into this calendar and if the user has this tagged and then it's going to update the opportunity um, of in the pipeline that the appointment is booked and it's going to then further send out user some email about what they need to do next and it's also going to add another tag called live kit appointment book so that is why you would see in the code that I have uh, this webhook URL which is being called initially for booking the appointment that's where when the AI agent in the demo said okay I have sent the booking link this is what it has done actually it's called the webhook in my CRM application and the CRM application has actually done the email sending and automating all the process creating all the lead in my CRM and everything and as I was showing you earlier it's also uh, checking if the appointment status is booked or not and for that it is connecting to the CRM API and sort of checking if the user have got this particular tag live kit appointment booked if this tag is there that means user have booked the appointment because as you have seen in the automation the automation is ensuring that the tag is added after user have booked an appointment and if the user haven't done that that means the user haven't yet booked their appointment so ideally tells the AI agent that there is some problem that maybe user is facing or he may not have received the email or maybe the email is sent to junk or something like that and that's why it was offering the help from itself so without even user asking for any help or instruction it was actually trying to help from herself so that is how an human service desk helps people right so that's how we can design an entire AI agency an entire AI agent system using WebRTC framework with just what 197 lines of code let's get the code and if you want the entire automations that we have built if you want to access the CRM for your business uh, please let me know there should be a link down I will add there uh, which you can use to get all this system for yourself including the CRM system please check the link in the video description for that so this is it for this video I'm going to bring much more use cases using this framework um, so stay tuned for that I'm going to create a a proper a highly available productionized setup using WebRTC framework in the coming days so please subscribe to the channel stay tuned and if if possible please take the membership that will help the channel so I can bring this kind of valuable content for you okay with that said I'm going to end the video source stay healthy take care and I'll see you on the next one